Imagine being a rock star in a high school in Western Nebraska, and everywhere you went to play, you were selling out venues. You grew up in a farm, and then years later, you are leading the charge, president of L2 Productions, a power player in the business of sports media and broadcasting. That is the life of Scott Railing. And again, there is not one way to get to where you want to get to in sports media, clearly, by this journey of Scott, which we are going to talk about in length here. On the On to Something podcast, I'm Brian Fenley, a broadcaster working with different networks, doing different sports. But as you're familiar with this channel, this isn't just an X's and O's, a timeline chronologically of Scott's work life. We go beyond that. We learn about how he met his wife. We learn about his role as a father. We learn about the taste of music he has and how music has bridged this awesome, loving connection between himself and the rest of his family. And it goes without saying the kind of talent he has in sports media. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe. Here's my chat with Scott. Scott, with everything that you have done in the industry, I'm super stoked to have you. And as you know, we're going to go beyond just what you do work-wise. Thanks so much for being a part of this. Yeah, of course. It's my pleasure. I'm glad to be part of it. I, I want to be part of where you are right now because behind you, it looks absolutely stunning with where you're situated right now. Uh, I have to say it's not bad in Austin, Texas in the springtime. Very nice day here today in Austin. What's not bad either is your music. And one of the cool things about you is as much as you are working and have created an impact in sports media, you have quite the the fledgling musical career as well. How fun is it to be sitting in on one of your performances with Jack Tronica? Well, I guess that depends on what style of music you're into. But uh, if you're into electronic and kind of funk styles, and if you're a fan of say jam music or improvisation, then you'll probably be a pretty big fan of it. That's what we do. It's all improvised. So everything's made up on the fly and it's very electronic focused and, and pretty funk kind of oriented. So yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, that's, that's what we do. How is it in business of, of sports broadcasting that improvising an ad lib, just like it is in music can be a benefit to, to what you all are doing at L2. Oh yeah. That's interesting. Actually. Uh, yeah, I would say there's a lot of parallels there, right? I mean, in the, in the TV broadcasting world and on the production side, especially, it's a lot about improvising and problem solving and kind of acting quick on your feet and just innovating on the fly, if you will. So yeah, that's actually kind of an interesting analogy you just made because what we do with Jagtronic is sort of similar to what we do in the uh, on the broadcast side with, again, improvising and kind of making things up on the fly. So your, your mom was first in the music singing in church, organ player, and how much of your interest in music is due to that drive of maybe wanting to impress your mom a little bit in that sense? Well, yeah, pro probably a certain amount. I'm, I'm not sure if it was ever necessarily to impress her, but it was just always around and it was something that was part of her and her life. And it just, it was kind of always around. We always had a piano and organ in the house as long, early as I can remember. And I just kind of gravitated to it. Uh, now, later on, I would say, yeah, it was kind of fun to be able to do some cool things in music and play some big shows and in front of big crowds and things like that and have my parents in attendance. That was obviously a proud feeling. But yeah, so that had a big influence on me early on was just her influence of being a music fan and a player herself. How big of a deal were you in high school in Western Nebraska? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, we were huge. That's not, say <laughs> that's not saying a lot, Brian. As you might imagine, there's not a whole lot of options in Western Nebraska. So we were kind of it. So, yeah, there was a lot of uh, homecomings and different parties and proms and whatnot that were sort of planned around our schedule because there weren't a whole lot of other options <laughs> at the time. But there is such an intersection between and there's no one way to go with where you are as far as becoming such a player in sports media. When did that switch, not to, to say you ever have let go of your musical interests and tastes, because that's still a really important part of your life, but when did that spark come where you felt like, okay, I love what I'm doing in the music space, but I can actually branch out and do something in broadcast and go that realm as well? 
Yeah, it was just kind of a natural progression. This one thing led to another. You know, I started off in music and then wound up in audio production and started my first recording studio. And, and then in my, I think, third iteration of my recording studio business, we started dabbling around with digital video because it's kind of a similar workflow. Tools are different, but the concept and kind of the workflow was very similar. So we started dabbling in that. And then we had an opportunity to work with the Texas football team the year they won the national title. And that was really my first significant video project. And it turned out to be lucky timing and kind of a cool break because they won the national title. And that content became the documentary film that you see almost every day to this day on the Longhorn Network. So that's what kind of got me into sports and into video all at once. And it sort of happened fast. And then it was sort of a quick progression from there to the live side of things. And it just turned out that, I, that, again, kind of the experience in the recording studio and the workflows there and the uh, thinking quick on your feet and improvising and all the stuff we talked about a minute ago, it lends itself really well to live production. So started off with the Texas Longhorn Project. That kind of led to some high school sports, and then we just kept progressing and growing from there. And it's continued. And you're still doing music. So if, if we're to walk into your studio now in Austin, this is not your not to say there's anything there's no normal studio because every one of them has their own personality, but you've got multiple different angles of entertainment going on in one place. Yeah, it's definitely when people walk into the building, it, it, it's definitely not a typical what you would imagine a TV studio to be. It kind of you know because again, it started off as a recording studio, so it still has kind of that vibe. It's a little bit more organic. The, the entire place is actually built into what used to be a house. Wow. So it's it's a commercial space, but it kind of feels like you're in somebody's house. Uh, we've got a lot of little spaces uh, different in what are now control rooms and recording rooms and whatnot. So yeah, it's definitely kind of a unique space uh, from that perspective. That is true. And you've got music scoring, that stuff, a a animators coming in at, at the same time. This is not something like you said that we see all the time. How do you make all of those things work and have such a large open appetite for so many different things in this industry? Yeah, I just I just love being around all of it. I mean, obviously, my background is in music and, and the music industry and that space. And, you know, we still do a lot of music production on the TV side and, and streaming and IMAG at music festivals and things like that. So I just love being around all of it. I love sports. I love music. I love the uh, fast pace and kind of the challenge of live production. So that, that's really it. I just love being around all of it. And of course, here in Austin, Texas, we're very fortunate to have just such an amazing pool of talent. There's just unlimited resources here, uh, you know, as far as people with lots of experience and talent, uh, you know, in every aspect of production from audio to video, uh, graphics, uh, animation, you name it. So it turns out to be a good place to be in to, to do all of that as well. But I just love all of it, love being around all of it. One of your resources that's talented is your son, who's been helping you out for quite some time. What does he bring to the fold here and what you all are doing? Well, he kind of got the bug early on, mainly with music, because my wife, his mother, is actually a world-class violinist and singer. She's the biggest rock star of the family. So she's taught the kids early on violin and cello and voice lessons and everything else. So he started playing cello when he was, I think, four years old and uh, wound up gravitating to the bass guitar. And he's a really, really talented bass player. Uh, so he's got the music bug. And then, yeah, he, when we started doing live TV production, he grabbed a camera. And since then, he's learned replay and how to TD and run graphics and all kinds of different aspects. I mean, he was pretty comfortable in just about any position by the time he was 16. So he's been working with us for a long time and now he's at full sale, furthering kind of his education. And I'm not sure what he's going to do, but he'll wind up in, in the production space in some way, shape or form, or maybe a performer. We'll see, but yeah, he's, he's got the talent. He's got the talent. You have the talent. Both of you share that. Where do you see yourself, your personality most showing up within him? I think probably the the love for music, the kind of natural ability to multitask, and then he's a good hard worker too, which I think I learned early on growing up on the farm in Nebraska. Hopefully I instilled some of that in him. He's He's got a really good work ethic. So I think it's kind of a combination of all of that, but he's just a good kid and a good hard worker and loves what he's doing as well.
when you were on the farm in Nebraska, what did you do that those who live in a city would have no idea about? <laughs> Well, let's see, you get up about every morning about 5 a.m. and you work hard until you go to school. So I did more manual labor by the time I was out of high school than most people do in their whole life. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of that, just, you know, a work ethic. I didn't know any better. Um, so we, you know, we raised grain, we had animals, all the usual stuff, and it was just uh, a lot of work. It was a family effort and everybody pitched in and got involved and, and uh, we got up early and did the work, went to school and then came home and worked again after school. So I don't mean to keep repeating the word work, but that's really a lot of it. It's just a lot of uh, heavy work, heavy lifting and a lot of work, but it instilled a work ethic in me that I think has really uh, helped me out in everything I've done. What kind of work were you doing on the farm? Oh, it just depended on what time of year, like in the summer, it was, you know, Nebraska, uh, it's mostly irrigated farmland. So back in those days, we used to set irrigation pipes, like every row, you would literally physically set a pipe, a tube to run water down the row. Now there's center pivot irrigation and we had some of that too but you know setting pipes uh you know working in the field whether it was you know depending on the season planting cultivating you know harvesting i loved the harvest time and i became pretty talented in operating a combine and to this day i can go back there and still have some friends that are in the farming business and i love jumping in the combine at harvest time and wow. getting involved with it that's that's the payoff right so that part is is really fun You've done that, and it's it's fascinating to hear the combination of what those different work responsibilities have done in shaping who you are. You mentioned your wife and what she does from a music perspective. What does she think when you show her some of your earliest rock band music or she hears it? What is her perspective, the feedback that she gives you, Scott, on from her perspective of, of musical expertise? Well, again, she's the rock star of the family. She's accomplished way more in the music world than I have. But I mean, that's actually how we met. We originally met at the South by Southwest Music Festival here in Austin. And in fact, I was recording a record at the time. And it's sort of how I convinced her to stay in town. Like It was a rock band, but I convinced her that we needed violin on the record. So that got her to stay in town for a few extra days. <laughs> I had to kind of talk the guys into it on the side to go along with it. But they ended up uh, going along with it. And then it turned out to be great. She was on uh, several songs on the records. So that was sort of our initial way we met and had that real cool connection right off the bat. And, you know, we continue to make music together to this day. What kind of music do you make together? Well, the stuff that she and I do together, I would say it's kind of a, sort of an instrumental kind of a, I don't want to call it new ages, but it's kind of piano based, uh, you know, a lot of complex chords and then with violin, you know, just instrumental. And then she jumps in on our electronic music as well. Like she sits in with Jagtronica and the different things that I have going on. She also has her own group. She writes and records with a number of art, you know, big time artists in the Bay Area and here in Austin and does her own thing separately. But yeah, the stuff we do together is kind of instrumental piano and violin. Being in the throes of working on a musical project together, how has that taught you something or learned you or, or, or helped you learn a side of her that you might not have known and, and bridged a new connection through music that you might not have gotten or seen or had that insight of outside of music? Well, it's just, that's, that's her thing, right? I mean, that's the essence of who she is as a musician. She was, you know, started playing violin when she was a little kid and she was in the San Francisco symphony by the time she was 11 and toured the world by the time she was 16. So she's a massive talent as a violinist and a singer. So it's just awesome to be around that kind of talent that, you know, in my own house with my own wife, you know, she's, I'm in awe of her all the time with just her level of talent and her just understanding of, of music and how to work with different people. She can fit into any different scenario musically and add a lot of value to it. So that's always cool to see. So yeah, it's just the, the the just the sheer talent that she has is is really cool to be around. How is she in awe of you outside of music? Um, I think she's, I don't know if it's so much in awe, but just kind of like, uh, yeah, hope, hopefully she is. But I think she's. It's been fun for her to see the progression from music to video, and then building a business, which I never intended to get into, never even crossed my mind. And then having success with it, being able to sell the company and now being part of Game Creek Video, you know, which is one of the most respected 
companies in the industry. I think she's gotten a kick out of that, just seeing this farm kid from Nebraska kind of progress through that and wind up in that scenario. I think she's she's enjoyed that. If I were to meet you as a child, <clears throat> if I were to meet you as a child and and get to know you, I'm sure a lot of the what you've accomplished now, you would have said, oh, yeah, I would never would have dreamed of that. But what instincts would I have picked up on? I know you talked about the work ethic and the hard work, but what would be reflective of you as a child that would tell me one day that you would build this company and grow it and do it in a fast way and then have the success that you've had in such a quick span, relatively quick span of time? I, I really have no idea, but I, I think maybe just, again, the work ethic has probably had a lot to do with it. I really do believe that. I guess I've, I've, I've always kind of been uh, willing to take risks and just try things and just sort of make up my mind to try to learn something and accomplish something, whether it was sports as a kid or learning instruments or later on in business, probably some of those things, which again, I'd not even sure I realized was happening, but it turns out that all those things have kind of led to, to some of the success I've had. How do you celebrate your success with your family? Oh, just, you know, just uh, at this point now, having the freedom to kind of not have to be involved in every single aspect of the business. You know, when I first started it and for many years, I did everything like a lot of people in this business when they start out, you know, I was the, the, the salesman, the producer, the, the guy taking out the trash, the guy cleaning the bathrooms, you know, the guy ordering lunch, making the travel arrangements, all of it. And so now being able to kind of just focus on that bigger picture, you know, kind of the client relationships and the, the direction of the company and the vision and producing the bigger events that I like being around, it's, I, it's, that's kind of the payoff. I'm now getting to enjoy the best of, of what this industry has to offer. And I'm not having to do the things that I'm not so good at and that I don't necessarily appreciate as much. So that part's been great. And then just having the free time to spend more time with the family. I'm not traveling nearly as much as I used to. Uh, so we're able to travel more as a family and just kind of enjoy more free time together than all those years when I was grinding, building the business. When you have that free time with your family, how are you spending it? Oh, we like the outdoors, as you might notice <laughs> here. Uh, and of course, we're in Austin where there's just unlimited outdoor activities. So we like spending time on the water. We live near Lake Travis. So we like being out on the water and just spending time outdoors. Uh, we like to travel. We spend a lot of time in, in Mexico and different places in Central America and things like that. My wife's family is in California, so we make trips out there. So yeah, traveling outdoors. And we make music together as a family. Everybody's in, you know, kind of circling back to that. We we do a lot of jamming out at the house. <laughs> where do you do that? Is that where's that done at the house? Well, we've got a piano and kind of a music room. And my wife teaches. She's she teaches elite kids that are like, you know. Broadway and Nickelodeon kids and things like that. She te teaches vocal lessons. So she's got a studio kind of centered around our piano room. And we've got all the equipment, PA and, you know, guitars and amps and drums and the whole bit. So any, any time, any day we want to sit down and make some music, it's right there. And then of course we've got the studio and then we've got our new venue now that we've recently opened the, the music venue uh, streaming studio. So we've got a few different places, but yeah, at the house, we all just kind of jump into the piano room and start going. When you, are in the piano room when you start going where have you noticed that music has been healing for you oh i mean just overall just you know music takes you to a place where you can kind of forget about everything else at least this is the way i approach it just any type of music any type of a scenario uh you just kind of let your mind run free and you're not worried about day-to-day -day anything you're just kind of in the moment you know, vibing to whatever type of music is happening. And it just, it's just a, a nice release from day to day life and stress and everything else. It just kind of, it's an escape, if you will. Where do you find your mind going when you have that freedom? Are you going back to your childhood? Are you reliving things there? Or where do you find yourself going in that happy space? No, me personally, and I suppose this is different for everybody, but for, but for me personally, it's 100% in that moment. And I think that's what's cool about it, right? You're like in the moment, you're, if, if you're approaching it right, you're listening to the other people that you're playing with and you're, you're kind of, there's kind of an unspoken language that's happening and you're, you know, one thing is sort of feeding off the other. It's very much in the moment. 
So, you know, you feel very present. That's what I love about it. So now I'm not thinking about the future. I'm not thinking about 10 seconds ago. I'm thinking about this particular moment. A moment where you're enjoying that. And why do you think it can be so hard in our business to always live in the moment? Because of everything that's happening, it's always evolving. It's always changing. So yeah. taking what you do in music and being able to reach that level of, of perspective of being in the present moment, having that and trying to move it over and, and carry that over to, to the industry of sports media, how can that make you a better version of yourself? Well, again, I think a lot of that stuff, again, I didn't have any preconceived notion of this, but it turns out that these sort of uh, things sort of lend itself to live TV production. So the, the idea of, of staying present in the moment, right? Not worrying about what just happened, not thinking too far ahead, because you, know, you really have to be focused on what's happening at this particular moment to stay on top of it and to get it right and to be prepared to, to solve problems and to just act quick on your feet, but also remain calm. I think living in the moment is maybe the most important thing to live television. There's certainly like all the planning and all the pre-production and being prepared. That's critical too. But while it's happening, to, for me anyway, kind of staying in the moment is the most important thing. So yeah, there again, there's there are definitely some similarities and some parallels between music and live production. And it's a beautiful relationship that feeds off one another and is so integral to who you are. And that's one of the main themes as we sort of wrap up this conversation is, is talking about how much of an influence music has had on your life and how it's led you to do beautiful things. And the ad lib perspective, the improvisation and how you, we touched on that earlier and how much that is a focal point of what you're doing in the sports media business. I think that is a fascinating connection there. And Scott, I am so excited for, for what you have in store. Obviously, you guys have done so much at L2, but are continuing to grow. And it was also so cool to hear your outlook on the family and what it looks like there from a grassroots level behind the scenes. So thank you so much for taking me beyond work, which is which is important, obviously, but I love looking at the human side. And I'm envious of where you are because where it is in Austin, Texas looks absolutely beautiful. Thanks so much for, for being a part of this. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you for all those kind words. And I and also have to say that my mom was very excited that, that I was talking to a guy that's a broadcaster on the tennis channel. <laughs> oh. she, she's maybe the, the largest tennis fan in the world. So she was very excited and she, she's going to be uh, following you now. I'm, I'm certain of that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, slowly making the climb and doing a bunch of challengers throughout the country as well at that level. So hopefully we get to, to do some tennis down the road one time or Absolutely. many times. That would be a blast. Scott is with me. I'm Brian. Scott, thanks so much, man. And this was so fun. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.